All right, this is how I plan on wiring up my three switch rapid strike. I'm really very lucky here because I have these great paper switches. If you flip them over, they become active or unactive, whatever way the switch is for you. Um, it shows you the line between the common and the normally closed circuit and the line between the common and the normally open circuit in the unactivated stage and the activated stage whether or not that's the right terminology that uh, uh, that's pretty much how it works to me that's how my mind sees it so that's how I'm going to show you guys with these pieces of paper uh, I'm going to draw the easiest line first and we're going to get started on the rev circuit easiest line is the negative from your flywheel cage to the negative on your battery and that's that that makes life easy uh, because we're then just going to follow along the hot wire or the positive wire, however you guys want to see it. We're going to wire from the positive battery feed to the normally open. And uh, that is because it's good to wire to the normally open. That way you're not switching directly between your negative and your positive. If you always wire your hot to the normally open, you don't have to worry about that circuiting. I, I saw that on a video fairly recently here. I, I think you guys should check out that video because that really helped me understand this here. Uh, but we're going to continue on with the uh, rev switch and go from the com over to the negative here. Oh no, I'm running out of fresh strawberries. Um, the stuff smells delicious, so hopefully we can draw a lot more. Alright, now we can actually follow the circuit and see how it's closed. If we activate the switch, we can actually follow the line in the circuit. You can almost hear those engines whirring. And there's a couple different ways you can actually get started on the second circuit, which is the return circuit. And I'm going to discuss that one first because I find it more important than the trigger because I really want that third switch took me a long time to get onto this concept so uh, hopefully this will teach you and you'll learn uh, you can go from the calm here and to the normally close or you can go from the direct battery feed I think that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go from the direct battery feed to get power over to my return switch and the reason why that is is because I don't want to have to worry about releasing my red switch too soon I just want it to always be able to return itself, which sounds like a good idea to me. Now on this switch, we're actually going to wire the positive feed to the normally closed. And the reason why that is, because this switch in a resting phase is actually activated. So it kind of acts like this open here. It's not a direct link from the comm uh, to the normally closed in this position. So that's really good for us. Uh, then we're actually going to switch over to the green uh, or a blue wire if you like the Brit Nerf. That's how they do it. I don't have those wires, but I have this color green and it smells like lime. So to continue this circuit, to get this return circuit going, we need to get it connected actually to our motor, um, making sure that motor cycles and we're drawing a live feed but linking the negative is just a really weird situation uh, but yeah anyway here let's go from the calm over to the normally closed here that way it's gonna feed directly through your fire trigger which is kind of a weird concept it took me a long time and we're gonna follow that feed through your calm your positive feed on your motor and now you can actually see how this line is going I don't actually need to activate that in this model this is going to become unactivated and we can follow through to our motor now we need to link our motor back to the negative to actually get it to go but in this case we want to also include the motor brake on the motor and the motor brake is actually a really easy circuit through here. It actually should have been the third circuit we're discussing because it goes just from here to here. And that way when your motor comes back in and closes, it actually links a short circuit to your motor, which is really nice. But 
we're then going to go ahead and come off the same open switch back down to your negative hopefully I'm not going too quick I really would just want to get this wrapped up and done it is a late night and it needs to be done so we're then going to go over the last thing the uh, trigger circuit I know the motor brake was last but see it's already hooked up and motor brake is going when this is closed this engine short circuits itself that's the motor brake All right. where do we go from here the trigger we need to trigger and all we need to do is pull it off the comm to the normally open and the reason why we pull it off the comm is because we don't want to pull the trigger without the rev switch uh, going that doesn't sound like a good idea but let's go ahead and uh, fire all of our circuits which is really really a fun thing to do we're gonna go ahead and just click this switch here and we can trace this back all the way through to our rev motors so now we can go ahead and rev up and then we can just go ahead and pull the trigger and shoot and now we can trace this through the motor here and then that dies there so we can actually trace it back through the motor here and then while this is going you might think oh no now the uh, now that mo motor brake is taking place but it won't because what happens is when we follow these through it's actually not connected to anything right here it just still goes through here even though it's constantly switching because your trigger mechanism has that motor brake on a normally closed and it's being activated not a problem you can go ahead and switch this over stop shooting now and you're back into this uh, motor brake but if it was left open it I'm trying to leave this open for you it's hard because it always returns itself um, if you leave it open you'll then see that the uh, return motor is receiving its power and going to go ahead and stop itself just like this and the same thing if you accidentally drop your rev switch too soon which is something that I would probably be prone to doing so that's how I'm wiring it up like that and I hope you guys understand I hope you guys like it if you do like it you could subscribe I do plan on making more videos uh, and if you like it enough maybe I'll make some like printable uh, circuits for you guys yeah thanks for paying attention oh uh, yeah I'm bad at this too don't don't stop at this video keep making sure you know what's happening good luck